You turn it around like this, and this is a soliton, and this is an anti-soliton. This is matter, this is antimatter. If you have, this is also a model for gravity, because um, if I make two solitons, oops, two solitons, like this, and I push this one a little bit further away, it has a tendency to come back because it has a tail in this direction, and this one has a tail in this direction. And because when the tails, when the solitons come closer, they can save energy. It's a model for gravity. If a solid, if two particles of matter come really close together, they repel. We haven't seen that in our experiments that the gravity becomes repulsive. So for instance, if particles would fall into a black hole and gravity would become really repulsive, they wouldn't get infinitely close together. Okay, so uh, if you have, on the other hand, matter and antimatter, there's no repulsive force. When the two, when the antimatter and the matter come together close enough, they just destroy each other and you get electromagnetic waves. And so this experiment illustrates how electromagnetic waves, regular waves, if they are just strong enough, like they're really strong, they can turn over and make matter and antimatter. And we can do this in the lab. And so it also is a model for the universe. So in the early universe, like we used, we thought there was some random initial condition, and therefore, accidentally, more antimatter hit the boundary and disappeared. Antimatter hits a boundary or disappeared, or if the antimatter hits a boundary with a really high speed, oops, the antimatter hits a boundary with a really high speed, it comes back as matter. That's pretty good. So, and, <laughs> so, and there was an excess of matter, a little bit of an excess of matter. All the antimatter and this was destroyed by matter, but there was a little bit of antimatter a matter left over, and this is us. This is us. Okay, and where did all this energy go? It is a background radiation in the universe. How do we know that the universe is expanding? The temperature is going down, and the heat of the universe is spreading out. So there are suggestions that the universe has a boundary. One of them is a good, pretty good explanation why there's an excess of matter. Like, look, if there wouldn't be a boundary, there has, would have to be as much matter as antimatter because, oops, because they always come in pairs. They always come in pairs. Are there competing models? Yes, they are. One model would work like this. See, can I produce matter without producing antimatter? Yes, I use some scissors, <laughs> cut it here, glue it back tie it back together at the other side and have matter without creating antimatter. Okay, I don't believe that. <laughs> Too complicated. <laughs> Who would do the tying? <laughs> okay, so, but it, so there are competing models and I, I like this model best. Okay, so let's move on.